the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Dear audience, I am Dr. Kuram Shahzad from National University of Modern Languages, Islamabad. I am going to talk about syntax. In my last class, I gave you an introductory lecture on syntax. So the ideas that I have taken today, again, they will be from the first chapter of understanding syntax. And some of the things that I could not talk about in the previous lecture, I will be talking about today. For example, in my today's video, I will be talking about the concept of language change in syntax. Under the heading of language change, I will be talking about four different things that understanding syntax talks about. Number one, Middle English, tag questions, adjectives less and few, lastly the pronoun they. Then I'll move on to talk about the other concept that is promotion and demotion and word order in syntax. Let's start with language change. Remember, because English language is a living language and all the languages that we speak, they are the living languages. So living language, it changes with the passage of time, but changes are very subtle and it takes a lot of time for these changes to occur. It is not necessary that one thing is happening in one variation or dialect of the language, it can become part of the standard language. Usually, since I am from the third world and English is not our first language, it is our second language. Of course, we follow standard British English. So, teachers, they have gone through some of the grammars which are prescriptive in nature. So they may not believe in the changes that I am going to talk about. But understanding syntax is written by a Britisher and he is talking about the changes which are occurring in English language. So teachers as well as students will have to take care of all these changes. Number one change that understanding syntax talks about is it is coming from Middle English. For example, from Chaucer's Wife of Bath's Tale. Chaucer's Wife of Bath's Tale, it was written in 14th century. I say not this by wives that have been wise. Look at the spellings. My pronunciation may not be correct because, of course, at that time, the kind of language that Chaucer was producing, it had a different pronunciation. So I say not, we can say I do not say this for wives that are wise, but Christ bad not every white, he should go sell a all that he had a. So after the word had, a sound is there and in writing e, it is there and with the word sell, you can find that E is there. That is why I read it, sell it. But Christ did not bid everyone to go and sell all that he had. So the major change here is the negation of verbs such as say and bid. Chaucer's bat and in modern English it is bid. In Chaucer's English, any verb can be negated by putting not directly after it. I say not. Christ bat not. But in modern English, we have got the word do or does or in the past did. So these words, you know, they are working as a supportive words, helping or auxiliary words. And they are used in modern English. But in modern English, after the verb, particularly the verb, not was added. And this is how the negative sentence it was produced. So this is a visible change that we can find in modern English. In modern English, we do not negate verbs directly in this way. I say not this or Christ bid not. These are not possible. Instead, we use a form of do which doesn't add any 
meaning of its own but is there purely to support not as in I do not or I don't say this. Chaucer's English does not have this do support rule as it is sometimes known. Another example is why hidest thou the keys? Why do you hide the keys? So these are two ways in which main verb in Middle English, verbs that aren't auxiliaries, behave differently than in Modern English. You may also have noticed that do support is used in Modern English for emphasis too. We had an example just now, Middle English did allow this construction. So in some of the constructions, even in Middle English, when the verb do or did, they are used for emphasis. They were there in Middle English also. But the kind of construction, negative sentences, these days in modern English after the verb not is not added. Rather, with the help of do support, don't, doesn't or didn't, they are coming before the verb and this is how negative sentences they are produced. Now I come to the second part of this language change that is called tag questions. Remember, tag questions are made at the end of the statement and we look at the statement. If it is a positive statement, then question tag will be negative. If it is a negative statement, then question tag will be positive. I don't go there, do I? So from don't, do is taken and I, the pronoun I is taken and question tag is made. I don't go, go there, do I? I go there. So here I go there, there is no do. So statement is positive. But we know that I go there, it can be converted into the negative sentence by bringing in do. So I go there, don't I? Because its negative will be I do not go there. So here question tag is made with the help of helping verb or auxiliary verb and the pronoun. So this is the standard English. But these days, even in Britain, people instead of saying, I go there, don't I, I don't go there, do I, they are making use of isn't it. And even the word isn't it, it is further, uh, you know, it is used like, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? So like this. But in Pakistani English or Indian English, people they do not follow this pattern and even in British English, many people they do not follow this pattern. I have done this work, haven't I? I haven't done this work, have I? You are playing cricket, aren't you? You are not playing cricket, are you? So this formal pattern which standard British English offers is not followed at many places in the world. So what happens is that we come across that people are using you have completed this work isn't it? You haven't completed this work isn't it or isn't it? Isn't it? Like this. So this is another change that which is occurring. So these changes they come from non-standard dialects of English and with the passage of time, they become part of the standard dialect of English. So this is another change. Let me give you the examples from the book. It's a hot day, isn't it? I can come, can't I? We will. We still lost in the end, didn't we? So this is the standard English. But then again, the author explains that this pattern is not followed in many parts of the world these days. So even in Britain, we come across, I can come in it, isn't it, isn't it? So I can come, isn't it? We still lost in the end, isn't it? And even this is further converted into, isn't it, isn't it, in it, in it. The third kind of change the book discusses is that examples in 20, from standard English, they are very common, though technically non-standard variant in 20B is replaced by 21. Less difficulty, less sweet, less boredom, less milk. So here milk is a, milk is an uncountable noun. Boredom is an uncountable noun. 
Wheat is an uncountable noun and difficulty sometimes it is countable and sometimes it is uncountable noun. So in standard English with uncountable nouns we use the word or adjective less and with countable nouns we use the adjective few or fewer. So examples are fewer students. There are fewer students in the class. Few sheep. Sheeps plural is again sheep. We cannot say sheeps but because it has plural so the word few will be used. Less cannot be used. Fewer people and fewer difficulties. But these days, even in Britain, people are making use of less with these countable nouns. So 21 example is less students, less sheep, less people and less difficulties. So then the author explains these changes. Look at 20 and work out what it is that conditions the use of less and fewer in standard English. Then describe how the non-standard variety in 21 differs. In standard English, less is used only with non-count nouns, words like difficulty, wheat, boredom and milk. They are inherently singular. We can't say three boredoms. We can't say, you know, three wheat or three meal, milk. But plurals like students, sheep, people and difficulties in standard English, these occur with fewer. Okay, but these days, you know, there are changes and people are interchangeably using less or few with countable as well as non-countable nouns. The final kind of change that I am going to talk about today is the use of referent pronoun they which is plural. Of course it is gender neutral these days because of feminism People, they talk about that why you are using all the time he or his when she is also there. So people, they do not fall in this into this trap of he or she. So they simply say they. And yesterday I was checking the entrance test of my students and they start the sentence with one and then they instead of using ones, they make use of they or they start the sentence with singular student and then instead of saying his or her, they use they. No doubt they come across internet English and on internet people are making use of they and in non-standard English people are continuously making use of the pronoun they. But as a teacher in CSS, PMS, people they want you to speak standard English. So then, you know, teachers, they do not give concession to the students, but students should know the difference. And in academic English, they should make use of one, if it is the subject of the sentence, one should do one's work. One should do their work. It should not be the case. You should work hard. They should work their work. He should work his work. She should work her work. So you should not say he should work their work. But again the examples are coming from the Britishers that in their country people are making use of they pronoun. If any candidate hasn't got a form, they need to get one from the office. So if any candidate is singular, it should be he or she need to get one from the office but the people are speaking so the author is talking about these examples and he's saying that they need to get one from the office. I remember one student who said they couldn't write the answer. So one student it should be he or she but the author is making use of they couldn't write the answers because they had lost their one and only pen. Do you know which assistant you spoke to? No, but they were tall and dark haired. So here the author has brought examples from the society, from the native people that they are making use of the pronoun they. Anyways, right now this is not the standard use of English language. We demand from our students when they are writing their research theses or academic English, they should make use of singular pronoun here. Of course, if it is 
a letter which you are you are writing to your friend you can make use of such pronouns but be careful when you are writing in exams or in your academic english somehow or the other language is changing so these changes you need to understand now i moved towards the second part of this uh video that i will be talking about word order and uh, why do languages they have syntax so of course all languages they have syntax word order is very important if there is no word order for example in english we have got subject verb and object so this is a very usual order and all people they usually make use of such type of order in english language in urdu we have subject object and verb main khana khata hu so main is the subject khana is the object khata hu is the verb in urdu we have subject object and verb in english we have subject verb and object so this is the word order all languages of the world they have got word orders and we are supposed to follow them of course children they learn all these things unconsciously because it is their first language and of course the native speakers somehow or the other they can tell whether this sentence is correct or incorrect intuitively but as a second language speaker we need to understand these word orders when the language is following such orders and the order is subject verb and object np vp and np this is called unmarked order in syntax and when there are some unusual orders that for in poetry for example the author the poet is bringing the object in the beginning of the sentence so this will be called a marked word order a marked clause a marked sentence so you need to understand the difference and you should remember that all languages of the world they have got word order why do we have syntax speakers manipulate sentences in all sort of ways because they are trying to convey different meanings syntax allows speakers to express all the meanings that they need to put across in simplest cases this might mean altering the basic word order of a sentence to emphasize or downplay a particular phrase or to ask a question or else grouping words together in different ways to modify the meaning from here the concept of promotion and demotion it arises remember if subject verb and object which is the unmarked clause this is how the author is making use of the sentence or of the syntax in the sentence that he or she is producing so whatever is coming in the beginning of the sentence it means that subject is given prominence so that subject is promoted and usually in active voice sentences the subject is promoted ahmed gives a gift to alia or ahmed gives a watch to alia or ahmed gives alia a watch so ahmed is given prominence which is the active voice sentence so ahmed is promoted in this sentence and when you are making use of passive voice sentences so you are bringing the object in the place of the subject in passive voice and you are giving prominence to it so such type of sentence or such type of idea is called that the subject is replaced by the object so object is promoted and subject is demoted because now in passive voice the subject either is removed altogether or it will be put in the by phrase alia was given a gift by ahmed so by ahmed which is demoted from active voice it is converted into the passive voice in active voice ahmed was promoted in passive voice ahmed is demoted so this is the concept of promotion and demotion in syntax which will be further elaborated in some other video later on in my today's class i have talked about language change and i have talked about four kinds of changes middle english tag questions adjective less and few and pronoun they and then i have talked about word order and the concept of promotion and demotion thank you very much